Right guys, so I've got the pond shield there, a new kit, but I want to show you the problems I've been having with the uh, material. Um, a lot of it is coming out and it hasn't set and it's supposed to be an epoxy two part um, plastic that's supposed to go quite hard. In some areas it's, it's gone nice and hard as you can see here and nice and solid but in there um, it's literally gooey so I've been using the knife to get in there and pull apart some of it as you can see another part there I've pulled out I'll just show you uh, what what this stuff looks like if you can see this it's really gooey it hasn't set and uh, it's not very good so either I had a bad batch um, what happened is it went solid in the tin but when I put it on the wood it just remained quite soft and took a long time to actually go off and some of it is just still wet so either the mixture was wrong or it just didn't work and it was a bad batch so obviously I've got a new kit here from America um, and I'm just going to put a new coating in there um, hopefully it'll go hard this time and uh, we can get this box finished so let me just show you the process with the pond shield so basically you have a tin of clear hardener you have a tin of paint in this case it's grey uh, basically you get half a tin of the hardener and a full tin of the paint and you need a measuring cup disposable because it will go hard and unusable so we need 50% um, basically so if I do uh, 50 millilitres of the hardener and 50 millimetres of the paint that'll take me to 100 mil um, so I, obviously you've got a measuring cup here so we've got the measuring cup here um, so we just want to go to about 100 mil um, so let's just do that so uh, we want to put 50 mil of our hardener in uh, so like so just get it to about 50 mil like so, right, we're about there. Try not, of, try not to waste any of the hardener because you get more paint than you do of the hardener. You can always put more hardener in if you want it to go off a bit quicker. Um, and then obviously we put 50 mil of the uh, paint in. Takes up to about 100 mil. Like so. Just Try not to waste any of it because it's quite expensive. Um, and then you've got a stick to whisk it up. Obviously you can see um, I need to whisk that up. Uh, you want to have a very good mix though. So mix it as much as possible. Um, I'd probably say give you at least about a few minutes. And also try and lift it up over. So it does get a full good coating. Um, they say this goes off in 20 minutes. Now in my experience it depends on the temperature. It's very much like fiberglassing this stuff. Pretty much it's a resin that you're mixing. Um, but obviously with uh, fiberglass you use a lot less hardener. Um, in this epoxy mix you're doing 50% part A, 50% part B. Um, and then you just literally apply it where you need it to go. In our case, we're doing the planter box, sealing it up, making it waterproof. Instead of using a liner or fiberglass resin, I've elected to go for this epoxy plastic. My experience is it's not perfect. Um, you may sometimes get a bad batch. I think my last batch was quite bad um, because for some reason it went off in the tin far quicker than it went off on the wood which don't make a lot of sense um, so you've not got a lot of time to use this um, but give it a good mix what I have noticed is if you stir it a lot that keeps the uh, drying time a lot longer if you just leave it in the tub like that and you were to come back in say 20 minutes that would be rock solid 
but I have noticed if you keep mixing it, that prolongs the, the uh, curing time. So if that's helpful to you guys, hopefully it will be informative. So if you don't have a lot of time, keep mixing it to keep it pliable and it'll, I think it'll stop the chemical reaction. I think once you leave it, that's when the chemical reaction starts to happen. So, let's apply this on the box. Right, guys, so we've done it again. So it's still wet on the filter box, and yet I left it in the tub for about 10 minutes, and it's rock solid. Look, it feels red hot, and it's gone off completely. And this is the second batch, the first batch hasn't dried yet and hasn't set. I have no idea what the hell's going on. So, <laughs> no idea, anyway. So basically I left it in this little tub ready to do a second coat and it's gone completely solid. Luckily, fortunately, this time I only did a little batch. Um, so I can do another one, not a problem. I've still got some left to do that. But I just wanted to show you that guys, cause look, it is solid as a rock, you know. So I just can't tell why my second batch is red hot, has gone off, the first batch is still wet. So, no idea. Right, ladies and gentlemen. So, I've uh, just put the final coat in of the filter box and it seems to have worked this time. No problems there. So down here, we have our pipes. We have holes in them, so that's to allow the water to pit filter and pilka up and through. So let's put those in. Okay, so those are the the uh, soft pipe I've put in, um, just to support the weight of the baskets. So let's put the baskets in next. Okay, so I've just put the uh, the two baskets in. I've, as you can see. Um, it's a mesh type of design as well as drill some holes at the bottom so water will filter through the holes um, So essentially That's the baskets Let's put the gravel in next Right ladies and gentlemen So this is one of the baskets that I've created um, The reason we're going to use baskets instead of just dumping it all into the filter box Is it makes, us, makes it so much easier just to pull it out clean it and then pour it back in um, so I've got that idea from the Hawaiian fish keeper if you've ever checked out his YouTube channel do do, do, do please go and check him out so without further ado let me just get the uh, the rocks so we want to use some quite large ones at the bottom um, like so this is what we call a wetland filter this is not a bog filter please don't get them confused um, so we're using about 40 centimeter um, rocks in the bottom and as, as you can see hopefully there you can see there's large gaps in between so we're going to start um, creating the wetland filter. It's not a bog filter, please don't get them confused. So we're going to be using our 40 uh, millimeter flat rocks, then our lava rock, which is about 30 millimeters. So we'll put our lava rock in there. So I've just put the Scottish pebbles in, 20 millimeter. Um, don't have to be perfect, just give it a good layer. And then the next uh, thing I'm going to put into my plants because they can be a bit difficult. And then we'll put our pea gravel 
on top. Right, so let's put some plants in. Put this plant in. Now get anything off it's dead if you uh, need to. And I think we'll uh, place it about, about there. got my uh, bucket of gravel washed out, pea gravel, and I'm just going to put it in the, uh, the filter box. So, I'm just going to put it in like so. So, for the mechanical filtration side of this, um, so we can filter it and keep it nice and clean. Um, we've got a selection of items here. First of all, you will need some scissors. Uh, we have some standard foams, um, some brushes, some Japanese matting, and basically that's our mechanical filtration. So all we need to do really is cut it to size if it doesn't quite fit. You may need to clean it out if you need to. Um, but uh, essentially that needs to go in there. So if it doesn't quite fit, you will need to cut it. So I just need to cut it about there. need to go in about there so I just need to cut it down a bit at the top it's very expensive this Japanese matting so if you do get some you know be careful with it so it fits in about there so basically we're gonna pour it about there um, and I will probably put another one um, just behind it. So I need to cut that down and all. So I just cut that down. I could always get another piece as well if I want to. The main reason I'm putting a piece at the back of it is because there's some pipes at the back. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just pop that behind like so I just need to measure it out you could be precise and use a tape measure if you want to but I'm just doing this manually by hand so that'll go in like that maybe take a bit more off just so it fits properly Might help if I've got some sharp scissors. Right, so that goes in there. That goes in there. Um, so obviously I've got some foams. I will probably get some more foams. So I just need to cut that to size as well. So just estimate it. That's a lot easier to cut this stuff. So that will go in about there. Just need to estimate the size of it. About there. So let's just cut that about there. Ok, 
Okay, another one. Estimate the size. And then I've got some brushes, um, but what I want to do is put a bit of Japanese mat in at the bottom, just so I don't uh, scratch the, the, the plastic with the ends of the brushes. So I'm just going to cut that down so it fits. Like so. Keeps the... Uh, Foams in position as well, not moving. And then we just pop our brushes in like that. Now I did have four in the other one, but I think we'll get away with three this time. Just shove that in like that. And hopefully that will stay in position and not move. Um, because the ends have these um, pointy bits, I don't want to have risk obviously um, puncturing any of the plastic coating so that's why I'm putting it on the Japanese mat and then basically that's finished there so as you can see that is the mechanical filtration so if you zoom in you'll see closer so we've got a Japanese mat in at the bottom brushes, sponges and more Japanese matting and then we've got our uh, um, biological, biological filtration in the wetland filter uh, basket. I've just got to do the other one obviously and then this has been finished. I hope you found this video informative so let me just get the other one finished. Right ladies and gentlemen, so I've just sort of finished it um, and there you go so that's the little filter um, so essentially the water comes through the pump up here into the surge and then out into the clear pipe through the sponges through the two biological compartments here with plants lots of gravel and lava rock and that's more or less how it gets filtered the pond does we also have the additional plant planter basket um, bulb filter as well so we'll we'll have three systems going off really we've got this we've got the surge and we've got the bowl as well so I thought I'd just show you the setup um, and it should be ready to go So I've got it up and running um, and everything seems to be working okay. The only thing uh, I did have a little problem with was, was the flexi hose. Uh, for some reason there was air getting into it. Um, but it's gone down now so it seems to be working alright. Um, so essentially this is how it's operating. So let me just give you a quick tour. So we've got a grass, a fiber optic plant, some other plants as well as some moss uh, which is growing on there. I may have to raise them up a tiny bit because they're a bit low in the water. Um, obviously more plants, more uh, grass plant there as well. Um, and our um, Japanese mat, sponges and brushes and over here we've got the surge running, operating um, in normal parameters. We have the clear pipe running down into the filter box and then obviously it gets pushed towards all the sponges through down into the spillway I must admit this smaller spillway is a lot quieter than the last one 
um, and I think it's a bit more pleasing the sound as well um, I have the option of adjusting the flow here to get that uh, filter running so let's see if we can do that right now while we're recording because I had a bit of a problem trying to get the flexi hose onto the uh, the uh, rubber boot so without further ado let's open it up Now, doing that may reduce the flow, so we may have to increase the flow on the Evolution Aqua Pump. I'm only running at about 1%, so if I run that up to 20%, as you can see, We've got the other filter running now. And it would appear we've just lost um, some of my uh, um, moss, unfortunately. I'll have to dig that out and pour it back on there, but essentially that's how it's running. So that's the bowl filter running. That's the uh, spillway running. And obviously we have over here we've got the skimmer running as well. So, there we are guys. We are operational. Fully running. Everything is functional. <laughs>